Today we'll be looking at Million.js, a new JavaScript library that aims to make your React apps almost 70% faster. It's a replacement for the virtual DOM in React. You can integrate this into your already existing React app. The creator of this library, Aiden Bai, just finished his high school. This dude has been managing math homework along with building one of the fastest JavaScript libraries on the planet. Kind of makes me want to think back to my high school days. But if you close your Emotional, eyes, damn it! Emotional, damn it! I played a lot of football, and never most wandered in other games. Yeah, good times. Anyways, what's even more impressive is the benchmark performance of Million.js. As you can see, it's close 92% closer to vanilla JavaScript in terms of performance, whereas React is only 26%. Although this sounds too good to be true, it works by using a block virtual DOM instead of a virtual DOM like React. And also it uses a compiler. So it already compiles the code so that it doesn't have much changes or processing to do during the runtime. To show you how easy and intuitive it is, let me go to the documentation and let's just see installation. You just install million using npm first. Then if you already have a project set up in any of this, you have to add this particular line so that it sets up the compiler. You can add more configs to customize your compiler. Now to get the performance benefits of million.js, all you have to do is import the block function from million react and then just wrap your react component with the block function. Similar to react.memo, it's a higher order function and you just wrap your react component with it. That's how easy and intuitive to implement million.js. Now let's take a step back and move into the browser and the DOM. The DOM is actually a tree-like representation of our entire web page. As you can see the code on the left side and the DOM tree on the right side. Make use of JavaScript to make changes to the DOM which will then be reflected in the UI. So dynamic changes of the UI can be made this way. This is usually done using the document object in javascript so the question obviously arises why do we need any library why can't we just make changes to the dom directly the reason is because dom updates are expensive because every time we change dom browser has to recalculate the position of the, all the elements and do a repaint which is pretty performance intensive also it is synchronous in nature so if there is any javascript code executing it will wait for it to complete and this can make the ui completely laggy now this is where React's virtual DOM comes into play. The virtual DOM is an in-memory representation of the actual DOM, a much simplified version of the actual DOM. Is when the state updates, React makes that change in the virtual DOM instead of directly making into the browser DOM. Then it compares the virtual DOM with the previous version of the virtual DOM. So it has two copies at all, all the time. It does so with the help of a diffing algorithm and the process is called as reconciliation. Once React has detected where the change occurred, it will render only that particular section of the component tree or the virtual DOM and then it will apply only those changes to the actual DOM. This is also coupled with the fact that React will batch updates together and it only ever updates the actual browser DOM once. So that is why it is much more performant. There is a neat little animation in Million.js website itself to visualize this. So here you can see the current virtual DOM and the new virtual DOM that is after the change. So if we go to the next step, you can see uh, it, it. this is how it compares the diffing algorithm. So it will first check the first node. Uh, has it changed? No. It moves on to the second node and it has changed from 2 to 5. So that it will it will note that. Then uh, it will move to the next node. It has changed. Yes, it has, uh, it has been removed. And we go to the next step. 4. Yes, 4 has been removed. And then we go to the next step in this is 5 and it has been changed to 2. And finally, this is the list of changes to be made to the real DOM. And it only makes those changes. So one is actually not affected. The performance bottleneck occurs when the size of the DOM node or the virtual DOM node or the tree increases. The more nodes you have, the more performance intensive the diffing algorithm becomes. And that is the performance bottleneck that Million is trying to solve. We already discussed the fact that it uses a block virtual DOM to solve this. It has basically two components. It does a static analysis, which is the compiler part we uh, discussed. This by extracting the dynamic part of the tree into an edit map. It also does a dirty checking. And TLDR, basically it diffs the data and not the entire DOM. Let's understand this with an example. 
consider a very simple react component like count here it has a state called count and we have two nodes uh, with count plus one and count plus two and we are just rendering it out as a list and there is a button which increments the count by one and also you can see the component has been wrapped around with the block function now here you see if I click the button the count is actually increasing the first step is static analysis this is where we create the edit map what does that mean so consider our example you can see that there is a div and it has two children uh, an unordered list and a button and the unordered list itself has two more children two list items so that is the representation here there is a div unordered list uh, button and two allies so the static analysis step what it does is that it will check for the data and not the entire DOM. so it only determines which nodes has the actual uh, state that is present so it does this by going through uh, it one by one so does it have a placeholder no does this one no this one has a placeholder uh, which is our count one and count two or the node one and node two and uh, this uh, will be recorded in the edit mapping uh, same goes for the second node uh, which is the uh, other list item and the third one doesn't have that this completes the making of the edit mapping the next step is the basic dirty check this is the step that checks for changes in states and updates the DOM so you can see it will only check the uh, main areas where the data is present so this means it's only concerned with states that is our node 1 it will check if the node 1 has changed as you can see it's changed from 1 to 3 and so that will be recorded and then in the next final step it will check for the node 2 uh, which is our second state and it has changed from uh, 2 to 4 so that will also be recorded so the only real change to the DOM is just to update 1 to 3 and 2 to 4 instead of re-rendering the entire uh, tree in the react case it will be this entire tree would be rendered because the state is part of the parent and so the whole tree would be rendered here only these two are changed in case of react as the tree grows because of the recursive calls that it makes to the component and it's all child components it can be performance intensive and in this case it is only concerned with the state and not the actual DOM so this is what actually gives its performance we are creating this edit mapping first and foremost is the compilation part okay so to demonstrate how crazy the difference in performance is they have provided a live demo on the website itself you can see there is a radar kind of thing uh, here and there are two buttons which we can click and you can also see the number of renders here so if i initially click react you can see the number of renders increases but the radar animation is kind of jittery and not smooth and it's kind of laggy now if i click million js you can see that it's as if I have not clicked it at all. It's very smooth and it's just flowing. And you can also see the number of render increasing. Now this got me wondering what kind of criteria that they are using to make this judgment. So they have provided the source code of it. So let's take a look at that. And you can see that there is a GitHub repo provided and it's a Next.js app. And we have immediately a component called extra content. So let's kind of break it down. At the bottom we can see there are two buttons present here one for million js and one for react and on clicking those button both of them are setting a state called a set render it's a set state function called and both of them are incrementing the render state by one the renders is a state present as a part of this component and we are just incrementing it by one and additionally uh, they are also calling two separate functions which are part of a ref these are render million and render react in case of react and in case of million inside this particular use effect we have a setup function which is called uh, here right this setup function imports two uh, major things which are like the create root function from our react DOM. so a bunch of functions like block mount and patch from uh, million js i also forgot to mention about the render react and render million function that are part of the ref that i showed earlier secondly we are creating two separate divs one for react and one for million for the ui elements uh, we are creating an array of thousand items and for million js we are basically creating array of uh, multiple items so the it's like a nested array of items so thousand items and inside those thousand items there are uh, more divs present so each of those contains children or something like that it's like a huge number of divs present similarly in the case of react uh, there is a component and it maps through the filtered array of thousand items and each of those uh, is nested with another div and uh, each of those has like a text within the, this is like a prop that takes in the component 
this must be the rendering logic of a million js and for react we can see that we have used the create root to create the root and we are using a root.render to render the component render react function where uh, react renders the root and render million so this is where the million js must be rendering the there is also something called as lag radar so this is actually a library that they have imported so it helps us to track whether our app is responsive or not or dropping frame so it's a neat way to test the performance of our app so this uh, radar thing that you can see that that's like a like a library so that is called as a like a react lag radar so we uh, import a component from that dynamic import and uh, we render it here so that is the radar part so what we're doing is we are creating like thousands of ui components uh, which which are, which are like nested and like deep and it's like a huge performance overhead so in case of react it's low and in case of million js it's fast and that is the premise of the test does this mean that we should use million js with every react app and improve the performance not the case this is not a silver bullet this means that there are certain use cases in which million js outperforms react but react outperforms million js in others as you might have already guessed from the test case of the performance visualization is if we have a lot of static content with little dynamic content so stuff like this where there is a div and there is like only like a single dynamic data but lot of static content we can use js for optimization but if there are like multiple dynamic content then it's uh, not a good candidate uh, this is because it gives the actual value and not the dom uh, second is it is it is only beneficial for stable ui trees that is like if there is a deterministic return statement that is it returns only a single kind of component and uh, in some cases in react we will do like if the if a certain condition satisfies we return one type of uh, component and otherwise we return something else so this is not an ideal candidate for million js and another limitation is the rule of block so there are certain rules that we have to follow while writing the code i let you look at the documentation because they have mentioned everything uh, clearly a few of the uh, rules include that we have to uh, create the block as a variable and then uh, we cannot use the normal map function which were used in react so if we have a array of items we usually do the map function and render the div but in this case we have a special for component and we have to render the array of items like this so there are a few uh, rules like this that we have to follow one that stood out for me probably was this particular one that we cannot use ui component library so if we use stuff like material ui chakra ui tailwind or anything and it has its own like custom component that is actually bad and this is because million requires you to use dom elements instead of components and components uh, as we discussed earlier can introduce non deterministic returns which is against the rules here uh, as it has mentioned it needs the deterministic returns another one does we cannot use like the spread attribute here that can be done uh, which we are used to in react so a few caveats like that but the bright side is that this is a progressive enhancement which is the idea that features are developed progressively on what is already supported so it's like an incremental development so i can't wait to see what million js develops in the future so and, and i'm really excited for this that's it for the video thanks for watching and if you like the content kindly consider liking sharing and subscribing and i'll see you in the next one what i leave you with is this strange logo and uh, they have a section which explains it so actually it's not million it's mill the lion according to the creator and it's like it's snout that is the logo of million and uh, yeah he don't worry he doesn't bite and he will bite <laughs> <laughs>